Hi students, again welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, I made, I explained how to add two matrices, how to subtract two matrices and what are the properties of addition and subtraction of matrices. In this video, I am going to explain how to multiply two matrices. This is most important than addition and subtraction. Okay, can you multiply any two matrices at any time? No, you cannot multiply any two given matrices until and unless they will follow one condition. What is that? Suppose I am taking a matrix A, let its order be 3 by 2 and another matrix let B, its order is 2 by 4. If you want to multiply these two matrices, they have to satisfy the condition that the number of columns in the first matrix, whatever the number of columns in the must, first matrix must be equal to number of rows in the second matrix. Then only you can multiply these two given matrices since they are following the condition that the number of columns in the first matrix is equals to the number of rows in the second matrix. If you multiply these two, we will have we will have let a matrix C, the resultant matrix and its order will be whatever the number of rows in the first matrix, those are equals to the number of rows in the resultant matrix. Similarly, whatever the number of columns in the second matrix, those will be equals to the number of columns in the resultant matrix. Therefore, simply if you cancel the common number between these two matrices you will have 3 by 4. So, the resultant matrix will have the order 3 by 4. If you take the compact form suppose A is equals to Aij whose order is M by N and B is equals to Bjk. Why I am taking Bjk? The number of columns in this must be equal to the number of rows in this. The order of this matrix must be also equal to the number of columns in this first one should be equal to number of rows in the second matrix and this order may be P whatever the order. I have taken A, A, I, J. A, I, J represents all the elements in the matrix A whose order is M by N and B small b j k represents all elements of B whose order is n by p. If you multiply these two, what is a into b is equals to? You will have nothing but sigma you have to add. We will understand this concept if you take an example uh, to multiply. Okay, This will become a right a i j into b j k. Now, J ranges from 1 to N. Why? Because the number of columns in A are ranging from 1 to N and also the number of rows in the second matrix are ranging from 1 to N. So, I am writing J is equals to 1 to N. If you see the number of the number of rows in this, I mean what I am going to say, I ranges from 1 to 1 to m. This i represents the number of rows in the first matrix. These are ranging from 1 to m means first row to m row. So, this i ranges to 1 to m. Similarly, this k represents the number of columns. These columns ranges from 1 to p comma 1 is less than or equals to uh, k less than or equals to p. This is the representation of matrix multiplication in compact form. If you take an example, suppose I am taking A as 1, 2, 3, 4 and let it be A and I am taking another matrix B, let its, its elements are 0, 3, 4, minus 1, whatever the elements may be, you have to check whether they are following the matrix condition for matrix multiplication. If you see the order of this one is 2 by 2, here also 2 by 2. The condition says that the number of columns 
the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix they are becoming equal so you can multiply first you have to verify whether you can define a into b or not if you cannot define you have to say that a b is not defined in this case a b is defined but question is how to multiply those two matrices therefore a into b is equals to we have to write first 1 2 3 4 into 0 3 4 minus 1 as i said you have to select the first row of the first matrix and first column of the second matrix right the first element of the first row first element of the first column of the second matrix 1 into 0 you have to write see i am writing here a b is equals to 1 into 0 after doing the multiplication of corresponding elements you have to go to the next element of the first row similarly next element of the first column plus 2 into 4 first row first column is over similarly first row second column you are multiplying the columns with the first row so all elements should be written in the first row itself if you are multiplying with the first row whatever the number of columns see first row first column one element first row second column another element first row third column if there is third column also you have to multiply first row with third column but in this case you have only two columns after completion of first row first column go to first row second column 1 into 3 right plus 2 into minus 1 2 into minus 1 if you go to the second row second row is 3 4 similarly take first row second row first column 3 into 0 plus 4 into 4 you have to move you have to take corresponding elements of the second row to the corresponding elements of the first column coming to second row second column 3 into 3 those are corresponding elements into 4 into minus 1 right so this is matrix multiplication if you do simplification 1 into 0 is 0 plus 2 4 is 8 1 into 3 3 minus 2 into minus 1 is minus 2 in this case also 0 plus 16 this is 9 minus 4 that is equals to a into b is equals to 8 so 1 16 5 this is the matrix a b in this way you can multiply two matrices we will take another example now i have taken two matrices a 1 3 2 4 its order is 2 by 2 if you see the second matrix whose order is 2 by 3 you have to verify whether they are conformable for multiplication conformable means are they satisfying the condition for multiplication if they will satisfy then you can go further in this case if you see the number of number of columns in a is equals to number of rows in b both are equal these are number of columns in the first matrix these are number of rows in the second matrix both are equals to 2 therefore a b is defined means you can multiply a and b after verifying their conformability you have to multiply 1 3 2 4 into 2 0 2 3 1 8 as we discussed first row first column 1 into 2 is 2 plus you have to go to the next element of the first row as well as next element of the first column 3 3 is a 9 similarly first row second column 1 into 0 0 plus 3 into 1 3 first row third column since you have that third column also you have to write the element here the first row itself 1 into 2 2 plus 3 into 8 3 8 ja, 24 with the first row all columns are over take the second row multiply all the columns as usual 2 into 2 4 plus 
4 into 3, 12. First row, first column is over. First row, second column, 2 into 0 is 0 plus 4 into 1 is 4. Next, second row, third column, 2 to the 4 plus 4 is 32. So, this is over. Therefore, you have to write a into b is equals to 2 plus 9 is 11. This is 3. This is 26. This is 16. This is 4. This is this is 36. Okay. In this way, you can multiply any two matrices if they satisfy the condition that number of columns in the first matrix or equals to the number of rows in the second matrix. Now we will discuss the properties. In the properties. The first property is commutative property. We come across this property in matrix addition also. If A plus B is equals to B plus A, then we will say that matrix addition is following the commutative law. But here, if A and B are two matrices, then AB, A into B is not equals to BA always. It is not equals to always, only sometimes a into b is equals to b into a sometimes but always not if you take a and b as your diagonal matrices you know that diagonal matrices or the matrices whose diagonal elements are non-zero and remaining elements are zero i am taking simple matrices let a is equals to 2 0 0 3 okay and b is equals to 1 0 0 4 see these two are diagonal matrices. If you multiply these two matrices, these are diagonal elements. These are also diagonal elements. If you multiply these two matrices, you will find that A into B is equals to B into A. Let us verify it. Right, students? A into B is equals to 2, 0, 0, 3 into 1, 0, 0, 4. They are conformable for multiplication. Since the number of columns which are 2 are equals to the number of rows in the second matrix, if you do the multiplication, 2 into 1 is 2 plus 0 into 0 is 0. So, 2 plus 0 is 2. First row, second column, 2 into 0 is 0 plus 0 into 4 is also 0. Therefore, 0. Second row, first column, 0 into 1 is 0 plus 3 into 0 is 0. Therefore, 0. And second row for second column, 0 into 0 is 0 plus 3 into 4 is 2 1. So, therefore, A into B is 2 0 0 2 1. Now, we will go to find what is B into A. The matrix B is 1 0 0 4 into 2 0 0 3 is the matrix A. If you do the multiplication same as above, you will have 1 into 2 is 2 plus 0 into 0 is 0. Therefore, 2 plus 0 is 2. Okay. Next, first row, second column, 1 into 0 is 0 plus 0 into 3 is also 0, 0. Next, second row, first column, 0 into 2 is 0 plus 4 into 0 is also 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Next, 0 plus 0, 0 into 0 plus 4 into 3. So, 4 into 3 is 12, 0 plus 12 is 12. So, are you getting the same matrix again? Therefore, you will say that A into B is equals to B into A only when A and B are diagonal matrices. Coming to the next property, associative to property. In this case, you have to take 3 matrices, let them A, B and C. If if you take three matrices and if they satisfy the relation that okay a into b into c is equals to a into b into c then you will say that the matrices a b and c are uh, following the associative property under multiplication here the condition is that a b should conformable for multiplication as well as b and c are also conformable for multiplication then only you can verify whether these products are equals to these products. If they will satisfy, if they will uh, give the same matrix on both sides, you will say that A, B, C or following the associative property. 
distributive property. Students will get confusion here uh, between uh, the associative property and the distributive property. If you see an associative property, they will the operation is only one either plus or multiplication or minus. Here, what is the operation here? There are four fundamental operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In matches, we are dealing only with addition, subtraction, and multiplication. There is no division in matrices. So, A into B into C. See, we are following only one operation that is multiplication. Then we have to identify that that is associative property. In this distributive property, we will operate two operations that is A into B plus C. This is multiplication, this is addition. You are following two operations. If A into B, A into B plus C is equals to AB plus AC, then we will say that they are uh, satisfying the distributive property also. Coming to the fourth one, existence of identity matrix. In addition of matrices also, we discussed that O is the additive identity element. What is the additive identity means? If you or if you are doing any operation on a matrix, if you are getting the same matrix again. In case of addition, if you take matrix A and if you are adding a matrix O, you will get the same matrix again. So, you are doing the addition and you are getting the same matrix. Then this O is called additive identity under addition of matrices. Similarly, there is a matrix which gives us the same matrix when you multiply it with any matrix. Suppose I am taking A and I am multiplying with I, then you will have A again. This I is called identity matrix. You know what is identity matrix? If you go through the video in which I discussed the types of matrices very clearly, then you will get better understanding. In this case, if A and B are conformable for multiplication, and also I into A will also give you the same matrix again. Therefore, this I is called identity element, identity matrix under multiplication. Next, and this one is very important property. If you multiply any two matrices AB, which are conformable for multiplication, and if your answer is O, right, then it need not be either of the matrices A and B or 0. If you go back to the algebra, product of if product of any two variables is 0, suppose you are multiplying x and y, your answer is 0, means definitely either x or either y or both x and y must to be 0, either x or y or both x and y must be 0, then only your result will be 0. But in this case, even though after multiplying two matrices, if your answer is O, you will understand that either of them may not be 0, A may not be 0, A may not be O, B may, uh, may not be O, but product may be O. This will happen in matrices, but it will not happen in algebra. So, these are the important properties. Now, we will discuss some important nodes also. These nodes are very important. The note number 1 says, if AB is defined, then BA may or may not be defined. In this case, if A into B is defined means the number of columns in the matrix A or equals to the number of rows in the matrix B, then it may not be uh, B A is defined. Suppose if you take any matrix, suppose A uh, 3 by 2, okay, B 2 by 4, A B is defined. That means these 2 and these 2 are equal, number of columns, number of rows are equal. If you take B A b into a that means b is 2 by 4 and uh, this a is 3 by 2. If you observe the number of columns in the matrix b are not equal to the number of rows in the matrix a. Therefore, it is always a b is not equal to b a. If a b is defined b a may or may not be defined. 
if ab and ba are both defined suppose then ab may or may not be equals to ba ab is defined and also ba is also defined but always ab may or may not be equal coming to the third property ab if ab is equals to minus ba if ab and ba are defined and uh, a into b is equals to minus b into a then a and b are called anti commute you come across the commutative law in properties of uh, multiplication of matrices see we said that a into b is not always equals to b into a but if a into b is equals to minus b into a then we will say that a and b are anti commutative this fourth property we just discussed what it says multiplication of diagonal matrices or commutative that means generally a into b is not equals to b into a we discussed and we have taken one example uh, by taking two diagonal matrices if you multiply a into b and b into a they are always equal if they are diagonal just go through that example i discussed in the properties the fifth one if i is an unit matrix you know that unit matrix in unit mat unit matrix is a square matrix whose diagonal elements are 1 and remaining elements are 0 if you take i2 what is i2 i2 says that there are two rows and two columns it's a square matrix as i said the diagonal elements are equals to 1 and remaining elements are 0 you may take 3 by 3 also 3 rows and 3 columns whatever the order may be if you multiply it to 2 times or 3 times whatever the number of times but the power should be equals to positive integer whatever the power you are taking that should be natural number whatever the number of times if you multiply the identity matrix with itself your answer always i okay coming to the sixth one this is very important students are confusing here by comparing these formulas with algebraic formulas in algebra what it says a plus b whole square is equals to a square plus 2ab plus b square but here a plus b whole square if a and b are of the same order then a plus b whole square is equals to a square plus ab plus ba plus b square since ab is not equals to ba you have to write them separately that is the a reason why you are writing a b and b a separately similarly a minus b whole square a minus b whole square can be written as a minus b into a minus b by writing a minus b into a minus b you can multiply first a into a is a square next a into a into minus b that is minus a b next minus b into a minus c, minus b a next minus b into minus b minus and minus will become if you multiply plus plus b square similarly in this case also in algebra a plus b into a minus b is equals to a square minus b square but here it is not correct a plus b into a minus b is equals to a square minus a b plus b a minus b square here here we have to multiply a into a is a square a into minus b is minus a b next plus b into a plus b a plus b into minus b minus b square in this manner if you multiply this also you will get that result finally a into minus b or minus a into b will give you minus a b these are the definition of the multiplication properties and nodes i hope this video somewhat helpful to you if you like this video don't forget to share it and subscribe to my channel and encourage me to do more videos on important topics. You will meet again in the next video. Until then, have a nice day. Thank you.